Hey everybody, it's Brian, and welcome to a not tutorial. This is actually a kind of real-time review. I just downloaded the Qt 5.6, which was just released. You can see installation finished. Um, I did download this on my Mac earlier, so kind of played around with it a little bit. So we're just going to launch this. I want to see what it looks like in all of its beauty. Um, well, it actually looks exactly the same. Now I'm just messing with you. So. Yeah, what's new in Qt? Um, yeah, everybody knows I'm like a big fan of Qt. Well, they have some new examples. Um, as with any release of Qt, there's you know new features and stuff. I'm just kind of poking around here. So it looks like you know not a whole ton of major stuff on the surface, but I'm sure underneath there's a ton of stuff. So all our future tutorials will be in Qt 5.6. And ooh, Qt World Summit, man, I kind of want to go to that. Not going to lie, I'd love to go to one of those. So, Qt 5.6 is released. So, just check out, you know, long term support. You can download. Now, some of the things I wanted to talk about really didn't have to do with coding, it had to do with licensing because I get a bajillion emails about this. So, when you go to, you know, let's just go here, let's go download. First thing it says is commercial, in house, private, or open source. So, what the heck, you know? What's really the difference here? Well, if it's open source, which I'm assuming most of you are doing because you don't have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to shell out for Qt, you're going to do open source with this, the LGPL, which I'm no lawyer, but in plain English, what it roughly means, and I'm sure someone out there will you know, correct me where I'm wrong, but you can compile your application, you can distribute it, but any changes you do to the Qt framework, like if you make your own classes or if you go in and bug fix like QString or something, you have to make those available to the public. Your um, software that you build also has to remain open source, I believe, but you can distribute it as a compiled binary. Whew. The other little caveat is that you cannot do a static compile. I might be wrong about that, but last I knew you could not do a static compile. While technically you could do it, legally you could not. Now, what does that mean, a static compile? Well, when you when you do a dynamic compile, which is what we've been doing this whole time, um, when you distribute your application, which I really should do some more tutorials on distributing applications, but you distribute your main binary, your, your executable, and then you got to distribute all these DLLs that go with it. And with a static, it puts it all into one. And sometimes it can be big. There's little tricks and tweaks you can do to shrink it down. but um, So you really can't do that with an LGPL. So, in the past, you had your, your choice between commercial or open source. And now they got this extra one, this in-house deployment private use student. Actually, I'm not sure if that's entirely new, but you know, it'll go you through this little questionnaire and it'll kind of guide you and you know tell you what one's right for you. Um, typically, I always end up at the LGPL. I have not purchased Qt because Qt was very expensive, at least in my opinion. And I don't have thousands of dollars to throw at something that unfortunately in my career is now considered a hobby. I'm not a professional programmer by trade anymore. I'm a manager. So, um, but with 5.6, they've kind of leveled that down. So let's click on that. And of course I'm recording. So now my internet connection is going to be stupid. May not be my internet connection. There it goes. I'm sure their sites just getting hammered. So one of the new features in Qt 5.6 is that it has three year long term support. Now, another thing that it has is full Windows 10 and OS X 10.11 support. That's full, tested, verified. Also, cross-platform, high-scale, high DPI scalable UIs, meaning your graphics will scale. And there's some other stuff, but one thing, if I can find it here, that really, really excited me was this. Startups. I was just making sure I didn't accidentally close Creator. I haven't made a little shortcut to it yet. Anyways, but startups, what's this? Well, previously, if you wanted to purchase Qt, like if you wanted to do a static compile, for example, we've been working in QML. So even if you statically compile QML with the LGPL version, your QML scripts are still secondary. There's no way to put them internal inside the executable or the binary. Well, with the commercial version, you can, and they have all sorts of other things that are just amazing in the commercial version. But it was out of reach of most people, myself included, because it was thousands and thousands of dollars. I make it sound overly expensive, but it was actually pretty competitive with things like Visual Studio. Um, but now, basically, 
they made it so you can just buy this thing. So for, and I sound like a salesperson, maybe they should like pay me to sell their stuff for them, but startup intro offer of 49 bucks a month. I mean, if you think about that, I mean, like if you're going out and you drink Starbucks coffee every day, you're actually paying more in coffee than you would be paying for cute. Now this comes with a caveat and I haven't read the whole thing. I just kind of read some highlights, but basically you cannot make more than a hundred thousand dollars um, a year off of whatever you're doing, which <clears throat> that would be somebody like me or like many of you, you're, you're selling your software, if you will. I actually don't sell software, but whatever, you know what I mean? And as long as you're making less than a hundred thousand, you are a small business, quote unquote, or an indie developer um, or a startup, if you will. So what this is, is it comes full featured. It's the full commercial version, but you don't get support. And I know you guys are going, oh, no support, come on. Well, if you think about it, it's because support costs a crap ton of money because you'll pick up the phone and go, hey, cute.io, um, yeah, I'm writing this code and it's not working. And I need somebody like Brian on the other end of the line that you pay a bajillion dollars an hour to sit there and tell me what I did wrong. And that person's dedicated to you for the, you know, life of that help desk ticket. So it, it costs money because now you got to employ this person, you got to give them insurance, things of that nature. So um, I've never had a commercial version of Qt, so I've never called support. And I've actually never even really needed to consider calling support because almost everything I found is on Google. It's just ridiculous. So, you know, just kind of read this, get familiar with it. Um, basically, you know, they also have the forums and a wiki. Um, I'm seriously thinking about doing this because this actually puts it well within my financial reach of doing this and I'm thinking you know with uh, God I totally just got sidetracked my cat did something that like totally freaked me out anyways <laughs> I'm thinking with you know with the uh, the money that I get coming in as donations it funds the website and I can pitch in a little bit extra of my own money and I can probably more than afford this so but definitely go out and take a look at it um, and they've got a breakdown of, you know, if you pay monthly versus yearly, obviously they want you to pay yearly, so it's cheaper than by going monthly. It's actually drastically cheaper. It's like 79 bucks a month if you do for a year. Um, but monthly is like 100 bucks a month. So, yeah, just something to keep in mind. But I just wanted to make this, you know, kind of readily available to everybody who's been watching my tutorials who's kind of either hasn't heard about this or hasn't had the time to really go out and research it. But uh, why should you do this startup offer? Why should you pay a company your hard-earned money? Because this tool's 100% free. And you can do all sorts of things with the commercial version that you just simply can't do with the open source version, such as you know, not distribute your source code legally. Um, and they have extra tools, um, like they have the QML compiler that puts the QML script directly in your binary. I think they have like graphs and bar charts and all sorts of other just things that are only available in the commercial version. So things that I get dozens and dozens of emails about, you know, it's there in the commercial version. You just got to pay money for it. So, and you're paying money for a good reason. You're funding the continued development of Qt. You're supporting the folks that develop this thing. And, you know, if you're paying for it, you're also paying for their salaries for the support, which unfortunately as a startup you wouldn't get. But, you know, as your company grows, so will your support needs and hopefully your funds. So that's it. I look forward to working with uh, 5.6. It seems pretty exciting. And, uh, well, I'm just going to cut it short and I'm just going to start playing with it. Talk to you guys later.